welcome back to another episode of Worth It. One that you probably were never expecting because we're doing oil? First off, oil is an essential part of almost all cooking. Two, these are also all oils that you can buy online and have shipped to the US. I have the oils in my possession. I'm bringing them to you guys. That sounds great. So today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three different oils at three drastically different price points to find out which oil is the most worth it at its price. On this show, we usually like to start with a pretty low price point, but today we're featuring three really delicious oils. The I first like oil is actually $18, and it's a chili oil. <gasps> chili oils are my top one favorite oil. Yeah, so to start off, we're gonna be talking with Max and Wendy, the owners of Boon Sauce. <laughs> I run Boon Sauce with my fiance, Wendy. Right now, I'm in Bangkok. I'm the executive pastry chef for Blue by Alan Dupas. Boon started as a hobby and kind of a passion project for Max. He grew up eating really spicy. And he also grew up eating a lot of chili oil, but he always kind of was missing the heat and the flavor from the chili oils. I've cooked my whole entire life. I went through this phase where I wanted to eat chili oil. I'd go to Cantonese restaurants, eat chow fun, just so I can eat chili oil with it. I, I just decided like one day, like, hey, why don't I just make my own. Like I would adjust it according to my dad's taste. I was like, oh, it needs to be spicier. He would give jars to his friends and family. They would ration the jars that they had waiting for Max to cook the next batch. So I just started making bigger and bigger batches. We have a co-packer. We pretty much make our sauce out of their commissary kitchen. I feel like every ingredient, its flavor is peak at a certain temperature. We start the shallots first just because I love the flavor of shallots and oil, like caramelized. Then after we'll put the garlic in, just because I don't want it to caramelize as much. It needs to be spicy enough, like I don't taste enough chili oils that are like spicy and hot. The spices, prickly ash, fennel seeds, the last stuff is the chilies. We don't want it to cook too much, just enough to kind of get them crisped up and kind of help release the flavor and spiciness into it. And also like I just wanted like a lot of umami in it without it being like funky. And usually we let the sauce sit around two weeks because if you taste the sauce right when it's made, you'll be confused like, oh, it's not really that flavorful. And then you taste it like a week after you're like, oh shoot, now I get it. Like, I don't really eat that much Chinese food. So like I want like the chili oil to be like placed on other foods that I usually eat. My mouth is already watering. Anticipation of the spice. Cheers, just putting oil in our mouths. Oh dear. Wow. This is this is what's happening in my mouth right now. Wow. That felt like a bite of real solid food. It absolutely did. Wendy and Max had some of their favorite ways that they enjoy boon sauce that they recommended to us. When Chick-fil-A had their chicken salad sandwich, I'd always get that just so I can put chili oil on it. So we made Max's favorite chicken salad. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Magnificent work, man. Oh my oh god. Oh my god. It actually works really well with these salad type sandwiches because it just disintegrates into the meat. The oil is almost more savory than the chicken salad. You know what this reminds me of? Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart. Stewart, a hundred percent. You got two people who, on paper, you would never see together. <laughs> I also love to eat it with tuna fish sandwiches. All right, let's go tuna now. Sandwich number two. Mmm. I gotta side with Wendy here. The boon sauce is already a little fishy. Right. And then just adding the tuna on there, this is a, just a cheat code. Like, yeah. I'm not a good chef. And I'm just like, enter, boon sauce. The flavor is really Italian to me. Something about the fennel, the onion. Speaking of which. Also Costco pizza. It's kind of gross, but I kind of like putting QB mayonnaise. Drizzle the lines, and then you just top it with chili oil. It sounds gross, but it's pretty good. I'm ready. Let's go. Boom. Oh God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Cheers, Steven. Okay, it's the mayo plus the boon sauce together. If you can get behind ranch on pizza, this is effectively the same thing. I am pleasantly surprised that this was Max's favorite thing to do with boon sauce because he works at all these really prestigious restaurants. Is it insane? Yes. Is yeah. it delicious? Also yes. I didn't think there could be that much range in a chili oil. I like the word you use there, range. All right. I think it's time for a wonderful oil fact. 
During an economic depression in the 1870s, Procter & Gamble had to find a way to reduce the cost of raw ingredients, including animal fats, in their bars of soap. Their solution to this is what eventually led to the greatest dietary shift in the history of the U.S., switching from using animal fats to vegetable oil to cook. Really? Maybe we should be cooking with more animal fat. I, I do think that there's a benefit to vegetable oil, which is the fact that it's just healthier to begin with. I think you think those things because of Procter & Gamble. Oh, snap. Oh. So, Andrew, what oil are you bringing to my residence next? Our next oil is going to be an olive oil. We're going to be speaking with Giuseppe and Schuyler, the founders of Exao Olive Oil. They're based in the U.S., but they're currently over in Calabria, Italy for their olive harvest. Okay, so I'll see you in Italy. Ciao. We are the founders of Axel Olive Oil. Calabria is famous for olive oil. My grandfather planted a bunch of olive trees, and from there my family kept this harvesting time. They didn't do just for living, they did uh, just for remember the memory of my grandfather. So we just started harvest. The best time of the year. We're out there in the trees and you have to put nets down. So with extra virgin olive oil, you don't want to take the olives that are on the ground. You want as fresh olives as possible. You then take a branch shaker and that is going to shake the olives off of that branch into the net. We're harvesting in the morning and we're trying to get to the press as quickly as possible. It's kind of like a race. There are 650 cultivar, which means uh, cultivated varietal. Each of them has a particular taste. We don't talk about olive oil as much as we talk about wine. So you wanna look for a harvest date, which is different than a bottle date. If they have an acidity level on the back of the bottle, that's bonus points. Brands should be tr pretty transparent about their acidity levels because that is one of the rules that you have to follow when making extra virgin olive oil. And really, it doesn't technically expire. However, it does go rancid. For me, 16 months uh, is the shelf life. If you have olive oil in your pantry right now that is over a year old, like, use it. <laughs> There's no time like the present. I just realized, and this is a really stupid observation, but it's just olives. There's nothing else in there. It, no, it's wild, right? We're in a part of Italy that is growing a bunch of cultivars that other people don't even know about. But oftentimes it's used as like bulk olive oil. So they're not honoring the olives that are grown here, but we have to let Calabrian oil be Calabrian oil. Otherwise it's getting lost. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring it back. I want it to be a nice product that people are really gonna enjoy and love and honor your family's heritage. I'm very excited for this. Buying nice olive oil is something I've always thought about but never brought myself to do. Because sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between good and bad olive oil. There's a very proper way to taste. It's similar to tasting wine. If you have a tall shot glass, those are really good because there's enough space for you to kind of like smell the olive oil. I love how the go-to olive oil tasting for all of us has been sake glass. See, we cover like this and we keep it in the palm. process to reach the temperature of our body. So I'm warming body it with heat. my palm. So once you are ready, you just do a little twist like this in order to make the olive oil go into the side of the cup. Twisting it along the side. Do a like ascent and record with your mind, your library, uh, all the flavor that you can get. Putting that one in the mind library. It, it is kind of perfumey. It's a rather tame smell though. It was sip. And after you do stripaggio. <laughs> So you're sucking through your teeth and the oil will spray onto the back of your throat. It can be very spicy for some people. That spiciness on the back of your throat, those are polyphenols and that's what you want. Polyphenols, which are antioxidants, which are so good for you. Hello, anti-aging. <laughs> we all want to look like Sophia Loren, right? Oh, wow. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there goes the spice in my throat now. It's almost like leathery. It you was like some yes, leather in like there? leathery. Definitely <laughs> transformed in a way I did not expect over time. It's crazy how often we cook with olive oil and we don't do this process. When you have a dinner and you are going to pair a bottle of wine with what you're going to eat. Yeah. The same is the olive oil. 
I don't really recommend for pasta with just simple tomato. Heat olive oil, mash an entire garlic clove, throw that into the oil, add in diced tomatoes. You want to let the tomatoes melt, add the pasta in, stir, stir, stir. You can add your grated parmigiano reggiano and add like a teaspoon and a half of olive oil on top. All right, cheers, Steven. Oh man. Magnificent. Mine tastes way better than yours. Just le leave my virtual apartment. <laughs> I mean, this feels stupid to say, but you can really taste the olive taste on the pasta. The healthy portion of olive oil on top. So just add that like thing that you need. It's just that, that third element. It's amazing how much you can get out of doing one thing the right way. Every lifetime needs a Giuseppe and Skyler. Like they need the person who is going to care about olive oil so much that everybody else in the world can enjoy it. The word of this episode, I think, is drizzle. Adam, oil fact. Oil paints don't actually dry. They oxidize, causing them to harden. What? Water dries out, right? And oil and water, there couldn't be two things more different than each other. So if water dries out, oil doesn't dry out. Wait, do you have any other information about oil paint? Before the 14th century, oil colors were made with pigment ground into an emulsion with egg. He here's the real question though. Does egg dry? I think it does. Or does it oxidize? No, well maybe both actually. Or does it congeal? Or did it come after the chicken? So for our final oil, we're visiting Marco and Michael at Truffle Brothers. They are the Truffle Brothers. We're gonna be checking out their truffle slices preserved in oil. Sometimes I see comments that say, oh, the expensive food is just a regular food that they threw truffles on top. Well, this episode might be the purest form of that idea because it is quite literally <laughs> truffles in oil. And then we arrived here 20 years ago, and we want to do eventually tasting place for chefs. In later, we do open up the public too, because people love the food that we make. We have uh, this uh, store in front called Spaccio Salumeria by Truffle Brothers. We have a lot of product. We have black truffle oil. We have truffle salt. We have a lot, a lot of ingredients that people love. It. And how did you two get started with truffles? We start uh, when we teenager, when we have uh, 10, 12 years old. We go together with the dogs found the truffle in the forest. We have this bowl of truffle maybe worth $200 and the guys give her $50. For $50 to 13 years old the kids who go to school they buy pizza for all his friends, we feel rich, you know? Before the COVID we supply more than 300 restaurants in Los Angeles. And I know a little bit less, but we supply from the fine dining restaurant, Providence, Spago, Melis. The truffle season in the best time of the year, so we buy a lot, we slice the truffle and we put in the oil from the fresh. A lot of people frozen. For this reason, people love it, our product. We don't want to just sell the truffle and the, the customer go home, but he cook with the wrong ingredient. For, uh, say, you, uh, you want to put in the steak or in the pasta when you mix pasta, the truffle uh, in the oil is very good. Everybody have a different approach with the truffle, but every time we try our product in different restaurants, we will always be impressed. Here we are, the final taste test. All right, let's take a little sniff of the truffle. Oh! That is truffle, yeah. Instead of not taking a shower for a year, it's like it's been showering for a year in this oil. So Truffle Brothers, if you're getting these truffle slices in oil, instead of, for example, a filet mignon with fresh truffle, we're using a flank steak with our truffle slices. And instead of a really nice pasta, we have box mac and cheese with truffle slices in oil. Not to be confused, by the way, with truffle oil. Because you're getting actual chunks of truffle. Cheers. Cheers. What else do I say? That's really good. It's surprisingly good. The noodles, they all taste like truffle. I mean, and we had truffle mac and cheese that came out of a lobster's carcass. And I'm kind of like, you know what? The Amy's bunny mac and cheese is kind of doing it for me. <laughs> Let's go on to the steak. Cheers. When you're biting the steak and the juices are coming out of the meat, you're incorporating the truffle in your mouth, which is interesting instead of like cooking it on the stove with it. It's almost like a shortcut to making a mushroom sauce for a steak. If you want to have a trouble experience without going to a restaurant, 
this is absolutely a way to do that. Especially if you live in a place that, you know, restaurants don't have truffle or in a city where it's not widely served. I feel like this is a bad dream that I've had where somebody surprises me by coming over to my house and I, I'm just like out of stuff to make an impressive meal for them. But if I had one of these suckers, <laughs> yeah. suddenly you've got a world-class dish. If Adam came over, I'd be like, oh no, I gotta make something good for him because I know he's gonna be judging me. Today, we ate the maybe the weirdest collection of foods I've ever eaten on the show, and I have zero regrets. I learned a lot of useful information about cooking. Name one thing you learned today that you're gonna be applying to your cooking for the rest of your life. Mayonnaise on pizza. Oh. Andrew Ilnicki, Adam Bianchi, and Stephen Lim. What oil was the most worth it to you at its given price point? My worth it winner, I'm gonna give it to Boon Sauce. Like, I think putting that on not meat can give you a similar satisfaction to eating meat, and I think that's a really powerful thing. Truffle Brothers was very interesting. Flavor-wise, I really enjoyed Boone the most. Am I worth a winner today? And it's my own criteria, so I get to choose. It's Exile. Giuseppe's family, from many, many years ago, planted these olive trees, and we get to experience the fruits of that love and labor. Adam, who's your worth it winner? Exile. Whoa! Well, that's it for now. Worth it is out for the year. Feel free to enjoy these oils on your own at home. You can buy them, send them to your friends as holiday presents. And Andrew, Adam, it's been good seeing you guys. The fact that we got to hang out in person at that picnic, oh, that was nice. It was delightful. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and happy eating. Happy eating. Mm -hmm.